View shot prompting is a technique where we provide examples in an LLM prompt, try to get it to return the response that we want. We're going to test whether a quantized version of the Llama 2 model can work out whether a provided sentence is a question. So let's come over to a Jupyter Notebook and I've created a bunch of sentences and I've put them in a CSV file. So let's just open that CSV file. We'll process it and then we're going to load it into the sentences variable and let's have a look at the sentences that we're going to try and categorize. So you can see we've got a bunch of different sentences. Some of them are kind of really obvious whether it's a question or not and other ones it's a little bit more subjective. Now the question is, uh, can our LLM work work out whether they're a sentence? So we're going to import um, some libraries, a library called Alama uh, from Llama uh, Index. So that import kind of gave it away that we'll be using a Alama, uh, which is a tool that lets you run LLMs uh, on your own machine if you're using a Mac or Linux with Windows support to come soon. So let's go over to the terminal and we're going to have a look at which models I already have installed, which we can do using the Alama list command. And we can see there I've got a bunch of different ones and sort of near the top you can see I've got some Llama 2 models. We're going to be using the Llama 2 7b model, so with 7 billion parameters. Now Alama lets us create our own models based on those ones where we can tweak the, uh, the prompt to do what we want. So let's open up or what we call a model file that I created earlier. So you can see in here in this model file, we specify at the top which model we're going to use, so Llama 2. Uh, we then specify the template. So we've kind of got a template with a, with a system uh, prompt at the top and then the actual prompt underneath. And then down the bottom, we've got a command that's telling it, hey, you're going to be a question analyzer. And what I want you to do is tell me true or false, whether you think it's a question. Don't try to answer the question, which is kind of the tendency of an LLM unless you explicitly give it that instruction. We can then close that file and we can call a llama create. I give it a name, so question llama2 base, pass in the, the path to that model and it will then parse the file and create us a new model. And if we now do a llama list again, you can see we've got our question llama2 base model sitting, uh, sitting in there. Let's now go back to the Jupyter Notebook and we're going to create a couple of functions that are going to help us when we're parsing the results. So one to handle uh, correct results and one to, to handle any errors. Now we're just going to create ourselves one more function. So this is going to be the predict sentences, sentences function. We're going to pass in the sentences and the model. We're then going to iterate through those sentences, uh, get the model to, to predict um, whether it thinks it's a, a question or not. We're going to replace um, any uh, like trailing uh, S's because sometimes those get returned by the Llama 2 model. Then we're going to pass in if it's a, a correct result, we'll pass it into handle result. Um, and then if it, if, again, we'll put the, the answer into the LLM answers array and if it failed we're going to we're going to handle that as well. Let's now initialize a llama with that base model and then we'll call the predict sentences function and we'll give it a few seconds and you can see like if we have a look now you can see it's got an error so it hasn't actually returned it in the format that we wanted which was lowercase true or lowercase false so it's done higher case true uh, which the JSON parser then can't handle. Uh, you'll also notice that it's printing out true every single time so it's not it's not really uh, quite working. Uh, how we'd like it to. Let's have a look what happens if we use the few shot prompting approach instead. So again, we'll come over to our terminal and we're going to have a look at a different model file this time. Now this one, again, it's got the template the same at the top, but underneath, just below where we put the system message, we're going to give it some examples. So we're going to say, my name is Mark. That's false. Can you do it with OpenAI? That's true. Uh, will you make another tutorial? That's true. So we'll give it three examples. And then again, the system prompt is the same. And again, we're going to use a llama to create that uh, new model. And again, we can see if we use a llama list, we can see our new model is in there uh, as well. So question uh, hyphen llama two. Let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook and we're going to initialize that model. So question llama two. And now we're going to try and get that one to predict the sentences. And if we give it a few seconds, you can see this time it's actually is getting uh, it's getting a little bit better. It's still got some of them wrong, but I think it's got it's got more of them more of them right, and it's not printing the same answer every time. But how well did we actually do? So when we're analysing this type of thing, there are some metrics that we can use, and Scikit-Learn has some some useful ones. So we're going to have a look at the precision score, the recall score, and the confusion matrix. So let's start with the precision score. So this is the number of true positives divided by the number of true positives plus the number of false positives. And so if we run that on uh, on our data, we get back a 66% like, result. How about if we do the recall score? So this one is true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So if we, if we call the function and pass in the values for that, 
This time we get a, a 75%. Now, we like ideally, we want much higher values. We'd want the sort of in the 90s, uh, really. And we can also create a confusion matrix, which kind of captures those four. So false positive, true positive, false negative, true negative, and puts them all into a, into a nice square. So we can call that, print it out. You can see we've got the results. It's not entirely intuitive, but uh, what it means at the moment, but I've made a function called render confusion matrix using Plotly. Again, the code for everything will be in the description and we can call that and we get back this nice, this nice matrix showing the results. Now, ideally we'd want the top right and bottom left to have very high values and the top left and bottom right uh, to have low ones, which it's, it's kind of a little bit like that, but I'd say it's done okay, but it's nowhere near good enough uh, to be able to use to, to automate uh, the, the checking of, of sentences to see if there are any questions. Uh, so next I need to try out this technique with some other open source models to see uh, how they perform. Perhaps have a look at some ones which have more, uh, are trained with more parameters. Uh, one of those will probably be Mistral AI. And if you want to learn more about that, check out this video up here where I show how to run Mistral AI uh, locally with Alama.